Everybody. I am Julie Williams, and I want to welcome you to How to Multiply Time. You know, it's kind of funny because we can't, we all have the same number of hours in a day, you know, um, but we can multiply the productivity by using our time wisely, you know, doing things today that can save us time tomorrow. And that's a lot of what Garland is going to be talking about tonight. And I'm really excited. Garland Colson is here with us. He's also known as Captain Time. And I met Garland. Uh, he has a book, Stop Wasting Time. It's basically five weeks to um, overcoming procrastination. And I bought the book because I had a serious procrastination problem. And it helped me so much that I went to him for private business coaching. And that helped me so much. And it transformed a lot of the systems that I use for time management and productivity. And having better systems kind of helped me overcome the procrastination thing. So I, I know you're gonna get a lot out of what we're covering today. In fact, his bio is so impressive, I have to read it, okay? I don't have it memorized. Um, he spent 25 years, quarter of a century, mastering time management. Of course, first he started because he needed to learn it, but the next thing he knew, he was teaching everybody else and everybody was coming to him. So now he's a time management speecher, a speaker, trainer, coach, helping thousands of people get more done in less time. They've even featured him in the Washington Post. Um, Garland calls time management the missing skill they don't teach in school. So we're going to pick up the slack and we're going to teach it right here. Um, Garland, welcome. And, and tell us first a little bit about the book, Stop Wasting Time. Yes, uh, the book is called Stop Wasting Time and Procrastination in Five Weeks. It is an Amazon bestseller. Uh, it's done really well. It has brought many people my way, uh, uh, definitely, as, as you found. And I wrote it primarily because procrastination just seems to be one of those big things everybody's stuck on. Like they just right. can't seem to get started. Once they get going, most people can plow through, but it's the getting started that seems to be the problem. So, yeah, so stop wasting time. You can find it on Amazon. Okay, so Garland is going to talk to us today all about how we can multiply our time. And then we have a few other things to tell you, but I want to let you know an announcement that you will get a full video of this, except for the faux pas at the beginning, but you'll have everything else on the video. Uh, oh, people that just get the video, they're not going to know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so you're going to, that's what happens when you don't attend. 10 lives, sorry, you guys. Um, anyway, uh, you're going to get the, the video probably at the latest by Wednesday. Um, there's a good chance you'll get it tomorrow. Jay Overton, our producer, very, very good at, at doing the editing and getting it done pretty quickly. So you should have it pretty soon. Um, the other thing is uh, I want to, let's see. Um, oh, when you have a question, go ahead and type it in the Q&A. It's most helpful if you type in the Q&A what, um, what your question is related specifically to what he's talking about so that we can kind of stay on a, on a logical course. And then any other questions that's not specific to that, of course, we'll get to at the end of the webinar. So go to the Q&A for questions, not the chat box. That won't be checked except for, for technical issues, okay? And um, then at the end, I'm going to tell you about uh, a class I have coming up in December, make 2022 a banner year for you, and also my free um, uh, voiceover career strategy sessions. We'll give you the link for that too. But right now, the star of our show, our guest, uh, Bizmentum Network founder, and we'll tell you all about that. Um, and and time management coach Garland Colson. Hey, well, <laughs> <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, so I'm going to show you a presentation on the slide. So I'm going to turn off my my. Uh, I'm going to share screens here, and I'm going to turn off my video so that you can see the slides. So can everybody see the screen? See the slides on the screen? Yes. Awesome. Good. Okay, so let's get started. Topic today, how to multiply your time to grow your business. And as Julie mentioned, I'm Garland Colson, known as Captain Time. And we I will provide a PDF of these slides as well. And you also have the video that Julie will be providing afterwards after it gets uh, edited by Jay. And yeah, there's my book, the cover, if you want to have a look for it uh, on Amazon. And as Julie mentioned, I'm a speaker, author, coach, and 
you know, trainer. So I run sessions like this. I do one-on-one coaching. So I've worked with a lot of different people in a lot of different industries. So I don't just work with any one type of, of mark, you know, of, of group. I work with everybody. <laughs> And there's the Washington Post uh, clip from it. Uh, it was uh, art- There was an article where they wanted to contrast the different productivity methods, such as Pomodoro, um, getting things done, et cetera. And so they asked me to weigh in on these. So I was one of the featured uh, productivity coaches there that was weighing in on that. And I do love questions. I really do. Uh, I'd add such a richness to our sessions. So I think that, you know, go ahead and ask questions throughout and uh, in the Q&A, and then they'll flag me and let me know when we have a question and I'll answer it here. If it, if I think a slide later on will answer your question, I'll tell you and then ask you to remind me when we get to that part. So let's dive in. So what's the problem here? Why don't we have enough time? So most of you are business owners, I believe. Uh, I think you're, most of you are in the voiceover field. And you probably wear too many hats. You are the marketing director, the manager, the customer service rep. And you answer the phone. So you're the receptionist. Uh, you also handle the accounting department. And you are the janitor. So every possible role in your business, you've got it. You've got it all. So you've got a ton of hats balancing on your head. And while I love hats, I only ever wear one at a time. You've probably seen the Captain Time hat uh, in, in the picture I had up earlier. I love hats, but only one at a time. So most entrepreneurs are horribly, horribly overwhelmed. There's just so much on the go. People to call, emails to handle, things to look into, marketing programs to get going, uh, dealing with clients. It's, it's just insane. It's an insane amount of stuff coming at us. And so it seems like we've got no time to get everything done. We're continually rushing from task to task, from project to project, and we're just always running behind. Now, I want you to um, tell me something. I, was, I didn't realize we wouldn't have chat here, but maybe in the Q&A, uh, if you could tell us or in the chat, maybe it goes to the panelists, tell me what percentage of your time each week do you spend on high value business growth activities? So these would be the marketing activities that actually move your business forward. Uh, you know, let us know somehow how, you know, what kind of percentage of your time do you currently spend on these high value business growth activities, the ones that are actually going to grow your business. Uh, you know, is Do that it- in the chat box. Put your questions in the question box and the answer here to this in the chat box. And Garland will get it because he's a panelist. Great, great. Okay, awesome, awesome. No, I really want to hear, uh, I'm kind of curious, like, you know, for most people, is it 10%? Is it 20%? Is it, you know, uh, what is it there? So, so some people, yeah, uh, not enough, <laughs> 15%, 20%, 5%, 30 to 40, 10, 60%. Good job, Micah. 2%. Yeah. Uh, one to two hours a week, 50%. Good job, Natasha. Uh, so yeah, it, you know, you can see the numbers. No, no, almost nobody's over 50%. And most people are probably running in the 5% or less range. And, and so we're really not getting to these activities. And yet that's what grows our business. I once met somebody at a business networking dinner who had just started her business. And so she was telling me about her business and I, I gave her some feedback. I said, well, you could do this for marketing. You could do that for marketing. I gave her four or five marketing ideas. And she looked at me and she said, well, I wouldn't have time to do that. And I said, well, how many clients do you have? She said, none. And I'm going, if you have a brand new business and zero clients, how do you not have time for marketing? What have you done? <laughs> you know, what, what are you working on if you've got no clients, a brand new business, and you're not spending any time in marketing? <laughs> so, so I want you to start thinking about high value work in this way. So think of two circles. The circle on the left is your daily work. It's the current work that you're doing right now. This is everything you do in a day relating to your business. On the right-hand side is all the work that actually grows your business. And so right now, where they overlap, this one area, the kind of green area here, is the high-value work that you're doing right now. So this means all this other yellow work you're doing is, it's work, but it's not 
work that's moving your business forward. And you're leaving all of this work on the table that could be growing your business. So ideally, we want to pull these two together. We want to uh, have them, you know, so that there's as much overlap as possible. So this is where the percentages come in, the 2%, the 5%, 10 or 20% people were saying, uh, you know, maybe up to 50%, but we want them to overlap as much as possible. So I have a process to multiply your time. And here's the steps we're going to work through. Number one is we're gonna find the high value tasks that are going to grow your business that are best done by you. We're going to dump and automate as many other tasks as possible. For tasks that we can't somehow dump or automate, we're going to delegate or outsource as much of the rest as possible. And we're gonna double or triple your personal productivity. Easy, right? <laughs> Let's show you how. So it's very important that you work as much as possible on only the high value tasks, because these are the critical tasks that grow your business and they're not getting done right now. Like there was nobody there that said that 100% of their time is high value tasks. I mean, it, it, you know, it seems that for most of you, uh, very few of you were above 25%. Many of us get bogged down in those daily detail tasks and we spend little time in those high value, high growth tasks. Most of us came from a corporate sector of some sort where we worked in a company where we were paid by the hour and it gave us some bad habits because when we were there, we just did the work that was given to us. I mean, yes, most of us probably worked hard and we probably did, you know, did good work and gave good output, but we didn't really sit there and analyze our tasks. We didn't really say, well, we should be doing this instead of this because we were being paid regardless. We were being paid to show up in essence. We were being paid to just sit there and work. Well, now, as entrepreneurs, you are no longer being paid to show up. You are no longer being paid to do these detail tasks. Instead, you're only being paid for the high value, high growth tasks. So if you're only doing that 2 to 5% or 10% a day, then your income is a fraction of what it should be. And most of these other tasks don't need your skill level. I mean, in, in many of these cases, these are simple detail tasks, data entry, bookkeeping. They're not your, your best skills usually, and they're not uh, skills that only you can do. There's tons of other people out there that would love to take them over for you. It just, just doesn't need to be the founder of the business that works on these things. And for many tasks, others have better skills and more time. You notice that Julie is using Jay to, for video editing, which is brilliant because video editing is a lot of work. It's, it's, it's highly skilled. And for Julie to spend a lot of time learning that task would be a waste of her time when there's other people who can do it probably in a fraction of the time, even if she learned it. You know, it's, it's a fraction of the time that somebody who's experienced can do that. And, and you get a lot higher I production would. values. Yeah, he, he would do a lot better job than I would. So that's very valuable. Yeah. And similarly, I suck at graphic design. I was still on my own web design company, but I didn't do the graphic design. I didn't do the web design myself. I did the marketing. I had five talented graphic and web designers working, working for me. So that's the, the key thing is I farm out these skills because I'm just not that good at them. And I don't think I have the eye for it. Like my son is a natural graphic designer and has the eye for it. And I don't, even when I work with the same graphic programs, I don't seem to have the aesthetics figured out. I know what looks good. I know, but I, I'm, I can't make it look good. So I want you to apply this process to analyzing all of your tasks starting tomorrow. So I don't want you to do any tasks at all tomorrow. And for each task you do, when you come to it, do this process. I want you to say, can I dump this task? Could I automate this task? Could I delegate this task? And then, and only then, if it's a high value priority task, do you get to do the task? I'm mean, aren't I? <laughs> 
So let's talk about dumping tasks. So as I said, many of us got used to the old job environment. Where we're paid by the hour to just be there and do whatever. So we didn't care if overall if our task wasn't really important or doing anything there because we got paid to do it. So we just did whatever they told us. But in this case, we end up with a lot of legacy tasks, tasks you may have done in the beginning that were important, that are no longer important, reports being produced that are no longer being even viewed by anybody. So think about those kind of legacy tasks that you've been doing and say, well, is this really needed? Why am I still doing this? Dump all the tasks that don't lead to your key outcomes. So if you're wanting to double or triple your business, focus on the tasks that are going to relate to that, that are going to lead to that instead of, um, you know, instead of uh, focusing on just, you know, daily tasks, instead of 80% of your day being tasks that are not working on your key outcomes. And there might be tasks no one will notice if you don't do them anymore. If, you, if you're doing something you've been doing for some of your clients or some of your students or some of your followers or some of your members, and nobody's commenting on them, nobody's really interacting with them, well, maybe just stop doing those and work on other things that they interact with more or they're more willing to pay for. So there's a lot of tasks like this. So this focusing on dumping tasks first, because there's no sense delegating a task if it could be dumped. There's no sense automating a task if it could be dumped. Don't make more efficient something that should never, never have been done in the first place. This is why we start with the dump. Okay. So You've looked at the task and you go, well, I can't dump this task, okay? Um, I, it does have to get done. So then you say, okay, can I automate this task? And this is something very few of us do. Uh, very few of us look at automating tasks, but it can be a huge time saver. And some of you might go, well, I'm not an expert programmer, so I don't know how to automate. But there's a lot of ways to automate without being a programmer. So let's look at your processes and some ways to automate them. The first way to automate is by using a text expander. So what a text expander does is it lets you insert blocks of text with a few keystrokes or keyboard shortcuts. So this is how, what I use to automate my support and email replies. I use it to automate my sales letters and proposals. And I will tell you that this uh, automate document creation, and this saves me hours every week. Uh, using a text expander. The one I use um, is uh, Phrase Express, but you know, you, if you're on a Mac, you'll need to look for another solution because I think that's Windows only. But text expanders save me tons of time. I do proposals with them, uh, support replies, email replies. If somebody asks me what's the URL to my coaching program, I can just type uh, you coach and it will drop in the URL. I can drop an entire sales letter in with three or four keystrokes. This is huge. So I'm only ever writing once and then automating how I do it. So as I said, uh, I use Phrase Express for Windows. If you're on a Mac, uh, just search for Text Expander and look for it. I don't know if Julie found a good one. I think she um, was, was testing a few at one point, but uh, she might have some insights there. Yeah, I don't. Um, I didn't find one that I was really happy with, and I just got too busy to finish looking. Okay, well, there, there's a, a good thing. Uh, if any, if you members there if, uh, are using any of you using Mac, find a good quality text expander. Uh, let us know <laughs> in the group, and then that way, that way we'll know. But I will tell you, it does save me hours every week, so it's an important tool. So, okay, another way to automate is look at the software you've already got and say, is there a way to automate some of the software? Can I automate the processes? Can I automate the reports? When you buy software, you're paying for support. So use it. Whenever I test new software, I, I try to break support right away. I ask tons of questions right off the bat to see what's going on and, and how good they're going to be. So I immediately reach out whenever I've got a question and, and send a support ticket in. And that will tell me if I want to continue using the software. Because if they take days to get back to me and their answers are just you know off the cuff and not really useful, then I know that I probably don't want to invest in that software for the long run. And when I test software, I test it not just for me, but for my clients too. So I'm, I'm looking for safe software I can send my clients to to test this out. 
Also, I love online forums. Uh, so you can join online peer forums for your software and post questions about automating the processes you do in the software. For example, in Bizmentum, the group will tell you about a bit later that Julie and I are both members of. There's a looking for area. So if you've got a question about software, you can post a note there and see if any of our other hundreds of members are using that software. And usually they'll come in and, and give you tips or insights or tell you what software they're using for that. So that would be the second step, a, a second way to automate. Look at your software and say, there's got to be a way to automate this. Third way to automate is using a tool called Zapier. So what Zapier does is it connects online tools together, like Gmail and Slack and Google Calendar and your accounting programs and things like that. And you can set up workflows that will, will transfer information from one to the other automatically. So you're not doing this copy and pasting anymore or exporting. So you can connect your email, you can uh, use this to connect and create reports, connect calendars, it's just really a great tool. Uh, task management systems, you could have it set up to have certain emails go directly into your task management system uh, and vice versa. So, And accounting programs as well. And customer relationship management programs, you can have it. So when so I have it currently set up so that when somebody signs up for Bizmentum, they're also automatically added into my mailer light, which is my email list program under the Bizmentum group so that I can e send emails out to all Bizmentum members as well. So that's an example of where, and that's all automatic. I don't, I don't have to add them ever. So if you ever find yourself copying and pasting contact information, there's a better way, there really is. So you gotta start looking for it. And Zapier is a great tool for that. If you have any questions about anything covered so far, feel free to go to the Q&A and we'll we'll check that out and um and if we're talking about it we'll stop or we'll let you know that we're going to talk about it later or that we'll answer it later but if you put the questions in the q a as they occur to you then um and we'll answer them uh as soon as we can as soon as it makes sense great okay So the next step to automate, if you can't find these tools to automate it, you can't automate it with your software or with Zapier or a text expander, can't solve it, talk to a programmer because any other task you're having difficulty automating, a programmer can do it. And yes, programmers cost money per hour, but if you automate that once and you never do it again, that could save you hours every month. So even spending two or $300 to automate something could save you thousands of dollars by the end of the year. Is Zapier on Mac? Um, yes, uh, Mary Beth. Um, Zapier uh, does work for Mac because it's a web-based program. Uh, CRM, someone says is a similar to CRMs. We're covering this later. Uh, not specifically, we're not covering CRMs here. We will talk a bit about task management systems, which are very similar. Preferred CRM, hard to say. There's tons out there. Um, I, uh, Airtable I use for some things, uh, you know, for CRM. And Nimble is another one I quite like. I like that Nimble pulls in social media. Uh, HubSpot's another one, but it's, I find it kind of complex to use, but very powerful so okay so it's important to remember you don't have to do all this yourself even when you're a solopreneur so we think i'm you know i'm a solopreneur it's just me i can't afford to hire a bunch of people so you think you have to do it all yourself but you really don't have to do it all yourself so let's talk about the delegate uh and at this case so we've gone through we've dumped all the tasks we could, we've automated all the tasks we could, now we're gonna look at having some other people do these tasks. And these they can do these tasks by either, you can either hire people to do them, or you can have people um, do them through outsourcing. So when should you hire, when should you outsource? Hire when you need full-time help locally. Like if they need to be local, you need the full-time help, then it's a good idea to hire somebody to help. Hire when you have enough hours to keep an employee busy. Because remember, if you hire somebody new, pay them full-time, but you, you only have maybe four hours of work a day, they're sitting there twiddling their thumbs for four hours and you're paying for that. So that's an extra cost. In that case, you're better off outsourcing. And when the person needs to represent you or be the face of the company, you're going to have them actively out there on camera talking to people, then you might want to consider hiring rather than outsourcing. 
Better to outsource when you only need a skill sporadically. It's not a skill you need every day. You need a specialized skill, but you don't need that specialized skill daily. So an example is logo design. You're not probably going to design new logos for products or your business every day. So it just makes sense to go to a good quality graphic designer and hire them when you need them. And if the skill is simple, it makes sense to outsource it because it's something anybody can do. You can easily find people who can do that elsewhere. And if you need other language help, another great great uh, idea to uh, to hire people in other countries who were uh, the other language is their native language. So, okay, what can you outsource? You can outsource almost anything: bookkeeping, internet research, writing, graphic design, content creation, scheduling, travel planning, lead generation, video creation and editing, marketing email broadcasts, social media management, search engine optimization, like it's all, you know, almost anything can be outsourced. Uh, and keep in mind, you want to outsource nearly everything that is not a high value task that grows your business. Now, keeping in mind, some of these things might, you might say, well, Garland, um, email broadcasts grow my business. And yes, they do. And they're very important, but they don't have to be done by you. As a matter of fact, you might have a copywriter who can write better email broadcasts than you do and put them together. Or your virtual assistant, even if you write the broadcast, can set it all up and send it out for you. So keeping in mind that even a lot of these things can be done by those people, even if they're marketing related. So marketing related and high value um, are not always the same. It, just because it's marketing doesn't mean it's high value. Marketing at a higher value could be things such as, you know, make setting up strategic partnerships. Like that's probably only something you can do, like how Julie and I met and, and how we're doing these joint webinars. You know, um, one of the uh, biggest ways I use my virtual assistant is lead generation. And by that, what I mean is, and this is very important, but I don't have to be the one doing it. I have to contact them, but she has gotten me in the last month, 400 new prospects uh, yes. that hire voiceovers for me to contact. And she helped me put together email blasts um, and she takes care of setting them out. So it really does save a whole lot of time to have a virtual assistant, particularly when you, you walk into your office and say, what now? Who do I contact now? I, I'm not sure what to do. It's very helpful to develop a plan and have, um, have you know, delegate something like that out. Hugely. And, uh, and if you'd had to copy and paste and find all those people and do that research, it would have taken you hours and taken you away from everything else. Now, instead, you make the phone call or you make the, you, you send the email or maybe there's been a previous email sent. You're talking to the decision makers who can actually purchase your services. So that's huge because all the other work to get to that stage, get the prospect to that stage is done for you. Do you have recommendations on virtual assistants? <laughs> so um, Adrian's asked, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, so um, you, when you, we'll talk about Bizmentum a bit later, but we have several virtual assistants on Bizmentum that you can, you can connect with. And I will talk about some other places you can find virtual assistants as well a bit later. But yes, virtual assistants are, are, are really helpful in these cases. So. Outsource types. So you can outsource to virtual assistants. You can give them general office work. They can do basic research, basic social media management, some writing, simple graphics, probably blog posts and easy website updates. But you might need expert freelancers for other areas. Like if you're doing digital marketing planning and management, you might want to hire someone to at least put the plan together. And then maybe your virtual assistant is the person who implements it. Copywriting is a skill that's usually a little bit higher paid than most virtual assistants and needs a little bit more expertise. Graphic design, another one. You, your virtual assistant might be able to do simple graphics like blog posts and internet memes, but you might want to hire a talented graphic designer for like an ebook e cover or a, a new product um, design or something like that. Online advertising well, campaigns, usually a little more complex as well. And website design, usually the design's a little bit you know more complex too, so. What kind of money are we talking about for the average, um, uh, not necessarily specialized web designer or, you know, graphic designer or something, but uh, for a typical virtual assistant, what do we need a budget? 
So uh, virtual assistants, it's all over the map as far as prices go. And it's confusing because there's virtual assistants who work in some countries where the US dollar goes a lot further and where um, you know, like there's this, what they call currency arbitrage. So places like the Philippines and India and things like that. So you may find people willing to work there as low as $5 an hour, maybe up to $25 an hour US. Uh, virtual assistants probably that are North America based probably start around maybe 15 to 20 US and go up, uh, depending on their skills and experience. And it's not all about the price you pay either. Uh, once I hired, I was talking to someone about doing something, they offered to do it for $3 an hour. And they said, well, how many hours would it take? And they said 30 hours, and that would be $90. I asked somebody, somebody else, how much they charge. They said $20 an hour. I said, how many hours would it take you to do this task? They said two hours. So one would be $40, but the $3 an hour person would be 90. So it, it's also about how, how good, how good they are that way. And we could do a whole session on hiring virtual assistants as well, um, because it's, it's a really deep topic, but it's very important when you hire virtual assistants to hire them for a few hours each. I usually hire multiple virtual assistants, then test their work and, and then only give more hours to the ones who are who are, um, you know, only to the ones who are giving me really good output. So, um, so the question there, uh, somebody asked, how do you find an outsource agent you can trust? And that was the key thing there. Hire them for two hours, ask them to do a task for you, look at the output, and then continue to give them small amounts. I usually hire two or three virtual assistants at a time and give them all test tasks. So. I hired one for two weeks and just asked her if she two weeks with pay, you know, um, and she was so incredible that I said, okay, you know, I, I, I was looking for a part-timer and I ended up hiring her full-time. Good. And you found a good one, which is great. And, and you hit it lucky right off the bat, which is good. So. Yes. <laughs> so where do you outsource? Go to online business communities like bizmentum.com that we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, it always helps. You can get referrals from people. Uh, you know, people you know, people you trust, because if they've got someone they're working with, then you can ask that. So asking people you know is always a great way to do this. Uh, you can look at Fiverr. Fiverr is good for one-offs. It's not good for a virtual assistant using every week, but it's good if you want something uh, done as a one-off. Uh, you know, sometimes I get some graphic design work done there. I've got a graphic designer I like there who works quite inexpensively, and I like his style. And Upwork is another one, but keep in mind, you know, these places charge fees as well, so it, it does get to be more money. So often it's better to just, if you can work your network and get it from people you know. So what if you can't afford to outsource or hire yet? Automate first because that's a low hanging fruit. Streamline your processes and create checklists because you can use those checklists to train virtual assistants later. And tag tasks for future hirings. So uh, right within my uh, task management system, I will tag it as VA if I want to eventually pass that task off to a VA or graphic designer if I want to pass it off to somebody else. So start slow, pick one small task to outsource and test test and then move on after, once, once that's proven. Free app, how do you like them? I haven't tried them, uh, Holly, so I, I don't know in, in that case. So. so there's tons of different platforms out there. You can test the ones, that, you know, and see what works for you. So, uh, One VA I introduced to one of my clients found over $4,000 in extra medical billing her first week. So she essentially paid for herself because she's probably working 20 $20 an hour, 20 hours a week. So it cost him $400 in the first week and she found 4,000. So there's a good deal for you. So hiring a VA could definitely pay off. Okay, so we talked about how to you know, get rid of some of these tasks. So now, how do you double or triple your personal productivity? So one of the first things you can do is do time tracking to ensure your high value task focus. Now I asked you guys how, what percentage of time you spend in your tasks and you all gave me estimates and they, they were all quite low. So definitely most of you can look to improve further, but you may be spending even less time than you think. I have my clients do time tracking for a week so we can see where their time goes. And often they'll tell me, oh, I spend 30% of my time on this highly important project. But when we track it, it might only be 10. So time tracking is a great way to find out where your time really goes. And a great tool for that's Clockify. So you just put in the, the what you're working on there, click on the project, 
and hit start and it will automatically track your time, hit stop when you're done, enter the next task, on you go, and then you can get reports later on. So, so I have a productivity success formula. I'm often asked by people just in passing, what's one thing you can tell me to help me with time management? You know, we're like in a 30 second elevator speech or something. So I came up with this formula. So the formula for success, productivity success, is to start with your goals and outcomes. Start with the key things you want to achieve. Then put together a step-by-step -step plan to achieve each of those important goals and outcomes. Set up dedicated time blocks to work on the plan for each goal. And just have systems in place, ways to manage these tasks and projects. And the reason you start with the outcomes in mind, I like to think of it as working without a goal is like driving without a destination. You rack up the miles, but you never get there. You never arrive. So this is why instead of just going into work tomorrow, I want you to say, what outcome is this task towards? What important outcomes? That's why we start with the outcomes. So examples, you know, if you wanted some key goals and outcomes that would grow your business, it might be such as find and use two new marketing channels to reach my audience. It might be create three new products and services my audience will love and buy. It could be increase sales this year by 300%. So what you would do is if those were your three goals this year, then you would want to set up a step-by-step -step plan for each of those goals. So an example might be, uh, with your step-by-step -step plan. Let's just take the one about find and use two new marketing channels to reach your target audience. It could be survey your existing best clients to see what marketing channels they use most. Notice I tagged that with a VA because a VA can help me with that. Research which social media channels reach my demographic. Again, tagged it as a VA. Choose the two new channels. That would be me. Take an online course on how to market using each channel. Perhaps me, perhaps a VA will do the learning for me. Then create a marketing plan for each channel. I might get an outside digital marketer for that. Set up the marketing tracking to track the success of the new channels. Again, could be a digital marketer. Implement each channel's marketing plan. Again, pass as much off as possible to a VA. And monitor the campaign progress. So that's an example of where we've chosen an outcome, set up a step-by-step -step plan. And I know there's probably tons of sub-steps in this too. I just needed to show you just a feeling and an example of how you choose your outcomes, then do the step-by-step -step plans. Then you wanna take your step-by-step -step plan and move it to your task management system. So then it will let you set up and prioritize those tasks. Uh, it will let you sort them by the type of category, the goal, the outcome you're working on, which should be the same as your time blocks that we'll talk about in a moment. Let you assign tasks to others. And it acts as a dashboard showing you the status of all of your projects. Are you a fan of Workflowy or Evernote for task management? Uh, Catherine asks, you know, I'm not. I do use a note program a lot, uh, but I used um, Upnote for it. I just found Evernote was took away key features I had been using and then wanted me to pay extra for them. And as far as Workflowy goes, I found that back when I first tried it, you could only have one long um, outline map, you couldn't have sub maps. So again, I didn't, I don't really use that as an outliner either. I either use my notes program, which is Upnote, or I use MindMeister, which is a mind mapping program. So, so your step-by-step -step plans then have to be added to your task management system. You assign yourself the high value tasks and assign the rest to your employees or to your outsourced people, your VAs, whoever. Monitor the tasks you've assigned and remove any blocks to completion. So if someone says, I'm blocked or I have a question, you ought to be monitoring those tasks and make sure you move them forward. So some ta common task management systems, Asana, Trello, Microsoft To Do, Zenkit To Do is the one I use personally. Airtable is kind of like a build your own. It's what my virtual assistant agency uses. And there's no one task management system to rule they're all, them all. Most are very powerful. It's really just finding the one that works best with the way you work with your team. And, and most of these have free trials where you can test them all. So let's talk about time blocking. So remember I said that um, Time blocking, dedicated time to work on your plans was really important. 
So this is that dedicated time that you're going to have for working on your various goals, projects, or roles. How does time blocking help productivity? Shows you what to do next. We waste a lot of time coming in the morning. Well, what should I work on first? And then we might waste 20, 30 minutes to deciding what to do first. With time blocking, you already know because you've already set up in your time management system, your task management system, what the priorities are and what uh, the top tasks are for each project. So if you come in, it's time for your marketing project or your social media project, your task management system tells you what to do next. Pulls work together in batches. It ensures time is spent on all your goals, roles, and responsibilities. So if you want to spend 30% of your time in marketing, you can set time blocks aside to make sure they're there. And working in a block of time creates a deeper level of focus that most of us are missing in our everyday work. How batches improve time. It groups similar work like emails, returning phone calls, or writing together. It simplifies and deepens your focus. And you get on a roll. You gain momentum by working for 30 minutes uh, to an hour in a project instead of jumping from task to task. So think about if you're doing your bookkeeping. Do you work five minutes on your accounting, uh, check one email and reply to it, return one phone call, then go back and do five minutes on your accounting? That doesn't make any sense. Instead, spend 30 minutes on email or 30 minutes on accounting or 30 minutes on writing or 30 minutes on marketing. It makes a lot more sense to work in a block of time. And you know you can time block whoever you want. This is just a very simple example using Google Calendar where I've set aside time for marketing, for client projects, for product development, for writing meetings, uh, for professional development as well, and for planning at the end of the day. So it's just an example of how you can set something like that up. And the time blocks need to match your outcomes, like the categories on your task list, like these all need to be there, your key hats and rules. So, you know, the way that you've set these up, you want to be setting up your task management system to have the same names for the, your lists or your projects in it that your time blocks have. And I also like to tell people to work with energy time blocking. So take your most difficult, critical project and work on it when your energy level is at its peak. For me, that is first thing in the morning. Uh, for many of us, it means you should dedicate your first one to two hours to the projects you hate the most, the hardest tasks you, you want to do that you know are critical, that you know are high value. Do those first. Uh, email is easy. Do email in the afternoon because it's not that hard to, to do answer email. For me, creating workshops like this, I love doing it. I do them in the afternoon because they re-energize me. I work on the hard projects I don't really want to do first thing in the morning. Uh, worst first, uh, Brian Tr uh, Tracy calls it uh, eat the frog first. So you do the worst thing first and reward yourself with the easier tasks later in the day. And the batching does help with this, but you need to find ways to reduce those distractions and create deep focus because every interruption you have breaks your focus and it can take 20 to 30 minutes or longer to get back to the same level of productive thinking after each distraction. So if you're distracted many times every hour, as most of us are, you're only working at a fraction of your potential. And world-class performance requires world-class focus. Oops. And I use a focus timer. I set a 30 minute timer uh, to help me focus. And so by starting a timer, you're making a conscious decision to focus. It can be a kitchen timer, it can be a timer on your smartphone. Uh, so the timer really does help you focus. And when you keep looking at the time, you think, oh, yes, I'm supposed to be working on that social media campaign, not looking at funny cat videos on YouTube. It puts an achievable time limit on deeper focus. If I were to tell you you had to work all day on a horrible, nasty project you hate, you're going to rebel. You're, you're mentally just going to pull away from it. But if I say you only have to work 30 minutes on this nasty, horrible project, you go, I can do 30. It's kind of like the dentist chair. We know it's going to be over in 30 minutes to an hour. So we can handle the dentist. If you can handle the dentist, you can handle that nasty, horrible thing for 30 minutes. And it reminds you to take a break. I do a stretch break at the end of 30 minutes. It just helps, you know, keep the blood flowing, keeps things moving and helps re-energize me. So that was the productivity success formula that we talked about. So again, Start with the goals and outcomes. 
in mind, your key things you want to achieve. Come up with a step-by-step -step plan to achieve each goal. Set aside dedicated time blocks to work on the plan for each goal. Have systems in place, such as a good task management system, to manage your tasks and projects. And once again, the process to multiply your time is to find those high value tasks best done by you, dump and automate as many tasks as you can, delegate or outsource as much of the work as you can, and double or triple your personal productivity by using the productivity success formula. So questions, I haven't seen a question in a while. Trisha had a comment earlier that for text expander for Mac, she yep. recommended text replacement. She uses that on the iPhone. It's called text replacement. Good, good to know. Yeah, and I don't use Mac products, so it's hard for me to uh, to uh, you know have a specific example for that. So right, that's my department. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the problems with so many different uh, ecosystems out there. At least there's only two main ones. I mean, there is Linux as well, but most people using Linux are kind of programmers and power users. So they, they love to find their own solutions. So. Yeah, no, we have a webinar coming up uh, with Garland on December 14th. Um, what are you going to be teaching on December 14th? The two most powerful marketing methods and how to use them. And you have right, to come so to the webinar to find out what they are. That's right. We're going to send out information on uh, how to sign up for that pretty soon. Uh, it'd be a couple of weeks probably before you get it, but it'll be going to your inbox as long as you get the um, the emails uh, that we that we send out. It'll go to your um, inbox. If you're not a member of the Voiceover Insider, uh, please let me know, Julie at voice-overs.com, and I can put you on the list. Um, so. Uh, Anyway, that's coming up on December 14th. And um, Garland, what about Bizmentum? Tell us about Bizmentum. Sure. So a couple of ways to connect with me. Um, so I have a website, Garland, you know, captaintime.com. Uh, Captain and my email is garland at captaintime.com. So you can go there to find out more about my online courses, my one-on-one -on -one coaching, and as well, the custom training sessions I do like this. And I have set up uh, a online business networking group called Bizmentum. It's meant to be a friendlier version of LinkedIn. LinkedIn's kind of cold and impersonal, very hard to connect with people there. So we've created um, a group with hundreds of people who are very excited to connect with each other, do business with each other, share information. Uh, we have regular events where we get together to meet each other. Uh, we have regular events where we do training sessions for people. There's some free online courses on Bizmentum. So it's really a great tool. You can join for free. Uh, you can go to bizmentum.com. And uh, and when you get there, I'll be I'll send you a personal greeting when you're there. You can mention how you found us. And, uh, you know, happy to happy to connect with you. And, and I do training sessions as well and how to get the most out of Bizmentum. We do regular ones as well. And I have several videos that I send to people new. So we really want people to succeed. And the goal there is to come in and ask questions. So if you're looking for a, a what, what task management tool would you recommend for this or what CR, CRM would you recommend, or I'm looking for a tool to, to do this, if you ask it in our forum area and our topic area, our members will chime in with their experiences, uh, what they've had many members. I mean, I've had cases where I've offered even do just a little free demo of a tool for somebody so they could see it live. Right. And, and I've done that for people through, via zoom and things like that. So that's, that's what Bizmentum is all about. So love to have you there. Now, I believe you have a video up there on Bizmentum about CRMs. I do. There is a there is a video on Bizmentum about why you need a CRM for online business networking, and I mentioned a couple in there. But the main focus on there was kind of like best practices, like you know how, how do you get from an online business network such as LinkedIn or Bizmentum, and how do you do anything useful with those con contacts? Because most of us have thousands of people in our contacts, we don't really ever use them for anything, and we don't really follow up with them properly. And so uh, the video gives training on how to do that, and I also uh, have a training video on Bizmentum on how to approach people spam free uh, through online business networking groups like Bizmentum or LinkedIn. So, you know, um, I, I, you don't mind if I interject a story about Bizmentum, right? Go ahead. So um, I've been on Bizmentum for, I don't know, what is it, a couple of months or so? Yep. Um, and uh, there's another guy on there. I don't know him. I mean, I just, you know, I answer his questions or he answers mine and we both participate. 
um, on Vismentum. And uh, when I was starting to do some free voiceover strategy sessions, people would go to a certain link on Acuity to sign up. And I was having trouble getting this whole thing signed up. Well, this guy, he's a financial planner. I don't know him from Adam. He doesn't know me, but he gave me an hour and a half of his time on a Saturday and helped me get set up in Acuity, not just showing me, but helping me get set up to do everything I needed to do. And we recorded it for me to be able to go and look back at. And he did it all for free. He just wanted to help me. So, I mean, what what would that kind of tech support um, cost? You know what I mean? I sent him a hundred dollar uh, Amazon card, but that was a surprise. He didn't know. You know, so that's the kind of uh, the kind of response we get with people. Uh, and I've been asking about uh, suggestions for uh, different productivity tools, like interacting with my virtual assistant and stuff like that. And people there have been very helpful for me. Yeah, and um, it, it really helps to get that wide bit of experience because I trust other people's experience better than I trust a random website claiming what their tool will do because <laughs> with real life people using the tool, that's what makes that's what makes sense. Like th th that's where people um, can tell if it works for your spe spe uh, specific use case. So, and that's where something like BizMan is really powerful. Uh, if it's okay, I just want to mention one other way to connect with me as well, Julie. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so uh, this is brand new, but uh, for those of you who are on Clubhouse, um, you can look for me there as well. And what I'm doing on Clubhouse, my uh, ID is at Captain Time, but I'm setting up a productivity cafe where we get together and just chat on a regular basis through audio on um, on Clubhouse. And uh, I think uh, Clubhouse could be a really useful tool for uh, some of you in the voiceover industry, because of course, you've got the voices for it. <laughs> so, uh, and I think it would be really good. And I've been using uh, Clubhouse as a user for the last three or four weeks when I would exercise, I would listen to it to get a feel for what's going uh, on with it. So now I'm finally ready to start, um, you know, a productivity cafe there. And I will also set up a Bizmentum uh, meeting group as well on Clubhouse. I just haven't set that one up yet, but I'm, uh, I'll have some uh, sessions coming up, I think, starting next week. So, so uh, does anybody have any more questions? Go to the Q&A. Um, we have a little bit more time if you want to ask something, but I think, I think, um, that Garland was kind of thorough. <laughs> so I don't know um, that that's needed, but uh, if you have any questions, definitely go to the Q and A. Uh, looks like there's one that came in. Oh, it's oh, just, just a thank you from Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Good to hear you here. Jeff is one of my students, one of my, uh, one of my clients. So, okay, so one of the things I wanna let you guys know, since there appears to be no more questions, is that we've got uh, coming up December 14th, again, we have Garland and uh, teaching you about those two things that we're not gonna teach you until that night <laughs> that are, are the most powerful for you. And then I have a class, a three week class coming up in December um, called Make 2022 a Banner Year for You. It's a three week course that kind of helped you launch in the new year. And, um, and we're gonna be sending information out about that later on this week. So be checking out your email for that. And we hope that you'll join us. And also um, I'm giving away free voiceover strategy sessions, um, one per person. If you want to go to uh, the, the Acuity link and sign up for it. Now I'm booked till January or into January, I should say, but I think there's still some January openings. But uh, Jay, could you put that link in the chat box for people? It is, um, it is HTTPS colon slash slash voice dash overs dot as a S dot me M E. That would be the link that you go to. Um, and it will just take you directly to my calendar and the times I have set aside for the free voiceover strategy sessions. So Garland, anything you'd like to add? No, um, I, I just, uh, one of, one of the uh, comments from Christopher was uh, th that it had been a, a very uh, time efficient slideshow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I am Captain Time, so <laughs> they are time efficient. And I always end on time. Like, I, I always drives me nuts when I go to a webinar or a presentation and they go on and on and on. I mean, I usually hang around at the end if people have more questions, but I want to make sure I always start on time, finish on time in case people have somewhere else they got to go. So. <laughs> 
And um, Greg, I am so glad uh, that you got a lot out of tonight. So did I. And I've worked with Garland. So you're going to get the PDF of the slideshow, which would be very helpful. And also you're going to get the video um, by, by Wednesday. I mean, you might have it tomorrow. There's a good chance you'll have it tomorrow. So let me give you um, the URL again to sign up for the free voiceover strategy session so that uh, Jay can put it in the chat box. And that's HTTPS colon slash slash voice dash overs dot as dot me. And then the forward slash. I don't know if you need the forward slash in there or not for that, but. I always put it there just because I don't know if you need it or not. Uh, a quick reminder you um, that you are going to get the video just from having registered and uh, you should sign up for Bizmentum. I highly recommend it. And uh, how do people sign up for that? Just bizmentum.com? Bizmentum.com will work. Yep. B-I-Z mentum like momentum.com. So uh, one more. I just more. added the link in chat. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, there you go. Bizmentum.com. So take a chance, uh, take a second and download uh, both of those two links. And then we'll just close for tonight. Last call for questions. Oh, there's Q&A. Let's see. Learned a lot. And there's the, the link. Thank you for that, Angela. Uh, Angel Angelia. What a pretty name. So, um, okay. We got everything covered. So thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Garland. I'm really looking forward to um, mid-December when we have that uh, when we have that webinar on um, December 14th. Um, lots of great information that's going to help us be different people in 2022 and run our businesses differently um, in 2022. One last call for questions. Let's see. Okay. No questions, just comments of uh, just feedback. Really lots of great it. feedback, which is awesome. Lots Thank of you. Feedback, which is, <laughs> yes, awesome. Great feedback. Hey, tell everybody on Facebook, they'll be able to get this video for free and we'll be letting everybody know where they can get it for free. And I want to thank you again for joining us and thank, uh, thank Garland for joining us as well. Thanks so much for inviting me.